not thought to behold this tome again. There. It is deciphered. Now your friends should be able to make sense of the contents. That said, it's one thing to understand the workings of the Etheric Converger and another to actually make it work. You do realize how much ether is required. Sid is keenly aware of the energy dilemma. His airship is by no means large, and it can only bear a limited quantity of crystals. If only we had white orosite in the etheric siphon. Alas, Minfilia is messing along with both artifacts. And Moonbreeder is gone. Would that there were another ready wellspring of energy for us to draw upon. <gasps> Why did it not occur to us before? We already have what we need! The Eye! 
It has been drawing ether into itself for as long as the Great Worms have lived. It is a veritable wellspring of energy. Hmm. It might just suit our needs. But is this energy something that can be harnessed at will? I believe so. With the aid of the Azure Dragoon of Ishgard. Then it is settled. Let us return to the Holy See at once. Stulla, wait. When did the light fade from your eyes? I might have known that it would not escape your notice. It has been this way since I returned from the life stream. An after effect of the teleportation magic I invoked, most like. They are called forbidden spells for a reason. What were you thinking, girl? I have no regrets. I but did what was necessary to preserve the light of hope, to keep my promise to Mimphilia. Besides, it afforded me the rare opportunity to wander the ether, a once-in-a-lifetime experience. I need not tell you that it consumes your very life force to see by sensing the ether around you. Take care of yourself. Do you hear me? I will, Master Matoya. And thank you. <laughs>